Good evening, y'all. It's it's pretty late here, but I've got some boys out here that are wanting banana pudding. So I thought I would show y'all uh, how I'm going to make them a banana pudding today. Now I'm going to use my pie filling I, uh, that I make for coconut pies, but I'm going to double it because I want plenty of goodie in this pudding. So I'm going to bring y'all over here and just show you the ingredients on the butcher block. And then um, I make mine a little different than most people. And so I'm going to show you how I make my filling using the microwave where I don't have to worry about it burning on the stove. So y'all come on over here closer where you can see all of the my butcher blocks full. Then we'll get this pudding made and fill those boys' tummy up with goodness. Okay, I've got my big old bowl that I'm going to be working in. And I need six eggs, four cups of milk, and I always use evaporated milk because it just makes it richer. That's your preference. Two cups of sugar. Now this is for the double batch. A teaspoon of vanilla. A, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And four tablespoons of cornstarch. And I just got a little bit of my canned milk and um, dissolved it. So I've got to separate my eggs here and get them ready to go. So I need, I've got a bolo here for my whites. You have to have your cookies and bananas, of course. And I hit the jackpot today. They had those vanilla wafers at HEB's store that's called Joe V's for 90 cents a box. I couldn't believe it. So here's what I'm going to put my egg whites in to whip them, but let me get them separated. This is my little Tupperware, uh, yeah, Tupperware egg separator that I've had for I couldn't tell you how many years. And it's still separating eggs really good. Now when you're doing this, you, you want to separate your eggs and put your yolks in one container and put your whites in another because if you get any yolk into your egg whites they won't beat for the meringue. I was going to make this what I just call a naked pie with and put the whole egg in and not save the meringues but it makes it prettier if you put the meringue on the top so I'll do that. I've got my eggs separated and they were at room temperature. That makes your uh, whites whip a lot fluffier and a lot better. Okay, I've got my six egg yolks in here. Now what I'm going to do first is whip them until they're blended really well. Because you don't want stringy egg in your pudding. Then I'm going to add my four cups of milk. And I'm going to blend that some more. I'm going to add my fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to add two cups of sugar. Now remember, I'm doubling the recipe. The recipe that will be at the end of the video is for one one pie filling. And like I said, you can use this and add coconut to it and you have a coconut pie filling. But I'm going to make banana pudding, so I'm just making a vanilla. Now here's what I do a little bit different. Got another recipe I'm going to try before long that I got from a, a, a site that I just visited. But I always cook anything like this instead of using a double boiler or having to worry about it scorching on the stove I do it in my microwave so I'm going to put this in the microwave uh, and let it get hot and keep stirring it and heating it and then when the eggs have uh, reached a temperature where they I feel like they're cooked then I'm going to add my uh, cornstarch and it'll thicken really quickly I love to use cornstarch and when it gets good and thick then we're ready to put our pudding together. So let me get this over to the microwave and I will um, let y'all see what's going on. And I'm gonna, got my bowl here and I'm gonna open the microwave. I told y'all how much I love this roll out microwave. It's so much easier for me to roll it out than to lift this up and put it, my other one was up above my head. So I'm gonna close it 
and I'm going to set it for about three minutes and then I'll come back and stir it and set it some more and stir it until it cooks and then I'll uh, add the cornstarch mixture and thicken it okay for safety when you're cooking eggs like this in the microwave it needs to be at 165 and I'm at 140 so I've cooked them six minutes so I'm gonna do another three minutes and then I'm going to check my temperature again. I want to be sure that everything is safely cooked. Okay, I've cooked this on on a uh, high on my microwave for eight minutes, and it's at 173, 174. So it's ready for me to add my cornstarch mixture and let it thicken. Now I'm just going to set it for minute intervals and uh, come back and check it because it'll thicken real quickly because it's so hot. Well, okay, let's open it and see what we got. Not thickening yet. Another minute coming up. Okay, I have, um, it's taken five minutes for it to get thick with the cornstarch in it. So now I'm going to add my vanilla. And just stir that up in here while it's still sitting here in the drawer. And then I'm going to get it over there and I'm going to let it cool a jiffy while I make the meringue for the top and get the bananas cut up. Then I'll get it all assembled egg whites in and I'm going to whip them until they form stiff peaks then I'm going to add my sugar now I just looked on the internet and according to Cook's Country which is America's Test Kitchen they recommend a fourth of a cup of sugar per egg white that's too much for me so I'm going to add probably three-fourths of a cup of sugar and then you need a fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar per egg white that makes your meringue stay stiff and pretty. So we'll be doing that also. Okay, I'm going to whip my egg whites. Okay, the egg whites are forming some stiff peaks. So I'm going to go ahead and add About a teaspoon of uh, cream of tartar. You see, that's formed some good stiff peaks. Now I'm going to add some sugar a little at a time. Right, we've got the meringue done. Now let's get over there and get our bananas and everything in the pan and get the meringue on top of the pudding. Okay, I wait till now to do my bananas because I don't want them turning dark and I do not like to put them in a solution to keep them from turning dark. So I put a layer of vanilla wafers in and then I put a layer of banana. You know if you peel from the bottom up on a banana, those strings usually come off? I forget to do that, but it does work. And y'all, I don't have any certain amount. I just guesstimate and put what cookies and all that I want in it. And I've never really gone by a recipe on putting the sugar in the meringue. I just kind of do what I think looks right. But I wanted to be just right on this today, so I looked it up to see what the world said to do. Now I'm just going to put some of the pudding on it. Now 
That's so rich and good, made with that evaporated milk. I guess y'all heard me call it canned milk. That's what we called it all my life. We called it regular milk. It was, you know, milk Mama bought at the store for us to drink, make chocolate milk out of. And canned milk was evaporated milk. But we just called it canned milk. Okay, now I'm going to put some more cookies. I think banana pudding and pecan pie is probably my husband's favorites. And these growing boys that's here, Richard and Josh, I think they'd eat anything. Oh, except bell peppers. They're not real crazy about them. Okay, now I'm going to put some more of the bananas on it. I sure do thank y'all for watching. And I know a lot of times you could fast forward on through to the end, but I hope you don't. I hope you watch and give me that watch time. Then get the recipe and write it down and use it at your house. You know how when you got a kid on a trip with you and they keep saying, are we almost there? Well, I've heard, is it almost ready? How long will it be? So I'm trying to hurry. When I think about dinner on the ground, it's what they used to call it at Easter and church anniversaries when I was growing up, family reunions. I always look forward to somebody making a banana pudding. And there was usually one of those old sisters that would do that. Okay, let me put some more pudding on. This will probably be this will probably be the caboose here. I'm about out of pudding. to scrape this big old bowl and get all that I can get out of it. See if we can stretch it around. I should have saved one more scoop instead of putting it down in the bottom, but by the time they dip it out, they're not going to know where the pudding was. That looks almost like divinity. You want to try to get it all the way to the edge because sometimes it pulls away a little bit. Try to, and I'm not guaranteeing that this won't, but I'm just telling you, get your meringue all the way to the edge. Okay, here's our pudding out of the oven, and I'm going to let it cool a little bit, and then I'm going to dish it up and give those boys some, and I'll show y'all what it looks like. I had it on 375 for about nine or ten minutes to brown the meringue. Okay, I've dished them out some of the pudding. See how it stands up but it's not too firm? Got their, their bowls over here on the counter. Draw in both of the boys. So now y'all have another great recipe that you can make for your family. 
uh, I'm going to take a probably take a picture of the card, but I can just give you a quick recap on what it takes to make one one. It's three eggs, one cup of sugar, about a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and two cups of milk, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and you dissolve that in a little bit of the milk. And you can watch the video to see the process. Then you make your meringue out of your egg whites, and um, you add about a fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar per two eggs, and you add about, well, America's Test Kitchen said a fourth of a cup of sugar uh, to two egg yolks, but I thought that was a little bit too much. You can adjust it to your taste. And then you just put it on your pudding and brown it in the oven, and you have a good dessert. You get known for making a good banana pudding, you'll have some friends. Y'all come back in a day or two and we'll learn something else that's good. The good Lord bless you.